Welcome to Climate Viewer Radio. You, you are literally like mapping out this blueprint. Do you know that? But I wonder if it's wise to fool with nature like this. I am willing to know the whole truth, to know the worst, and provide for it. Freedom is Grounded in reality. ClimateViewer.com Ooh, I think I have chills too. Hi everybody, it's May the 4th be with you day. Uh, my name is Jim Lee and I'm going to be your host for Climate Viewer Radio. Um, I got addicted. News, particularly daily news, is more addictive than crack cocaine, more addictive than heroin, more addictive than cigarettes. Um, Dan Rather said that. Are you addicted to news? You might be. Um, let me uh, go ahead and get uh, Bill. Uh, there's Packy. Let's get Packy in here real quick. Uh, Packy, is that you? Yeah, I'm in. How you doing? Can you guys hear me? It's like I might have lost the call. Maybe I should call back in. No, you're good, dude. Um, so everybody, uh, this is my first time with Blog Talk Radio. You're going to probably hear some beeps and mess ups, but we're going to get on through it and figure out this panel here. Um, we got Packy on the line. I believe we probably have uh, Radchick on the line as well. I want to bring her in as soon as possible. Um, Bill is working the soundboard in the back right now, and he's trying to figure out the bells and whistles. But let's just get to it. Um Packy uh, is one of our uh, hosted sites on ClimateViewer.com. If guys aren't familiar with ClimateViewer, ClimateViewer.com is Climate Viewer News. Um, it's a project that I've been working on for about three years. Um, tons and tons of work goes into it. We have um, we map out pollution, privacy, and climate change. And what I've been doing is I've been trying to bring Many of the truthers from our community together, um, there's really not a formed community. Um, there's a loose-knit community of people who, uh, you know, we cohabitate, we share information, but it, it, at a lot of times it seems more like a competition than, uh, you know, like a, a, a group effort. Um, so what I decided to do was, you know, try to build a website where – Activists who are passionate about their topics and really need a safe place to get their information out, um, that they could have that for free. And um, so for the last two years, um, I started building this website. And when I first started, I didn't even really, I didn't know much about web page design. Um, I failed many, many, many times. Um, what I did was I started out mapping things in Google Earth. And then trying to get them onto a web page so that people could see all of these places around the world that are very heavily polluted. Um, and in the end, what ended up happening was it has really blossomed into this massive repository for research and information. Um, it's an ever-evolving website. The information that's there, it, it'll it'll constantly be remolded um, because our intention is to um really get the truth out there get it right and have all of the facts in one spot so that somebody who's a newcomer to this world of really caring about our environment that they can you know dive right in you know here's um a page about geoengineering i've never heard of it let me dive right in um give me all of it at once but that doesn't work for everybody so what i decided to do was use my skills to, to better help others who are more, you know, more laser focused on a topic. You can't be everything to everyone. So with that, um, I brought on the first round of, uh, you know, digital heroes. And uh, Packy uh, is one of them. And Radchick and uh, also, uh, let's see, Bill Nar. <laughs> Packy, you back there. No, I got you back live, dude. Oh, was I not live there for a while? Yeah, you weren't. I got you back on now. Um, so, Packy, why don't you introduce yourself? I'll go last. I want to make sure that that's Radchick on the other line real quick before I bring her in. Okay. 
why don't you go ahead and tell everybody about yourself, how you got I, into this world. How I got into this world. Oh, that's a that's a that's a two hour show right there. But I'll, not not I'll the, sum not it up. the yeah the, this digital world of activism and and caring about things that people at the gas station shake their head over. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, first off, really, I just want to say um, thank you to ClimateViewer.com. I definitely want to say thank you to Jim. I definitely want to say thank you to Christina. I want to say thank you to Bill. Um, I want to say thank you to all the uh, people that are out there that are helping us. The site has been doing great. Uh, we've been getting tons of requests, tons of people asking us to put up information. It's just real hard to keep up because there's just so much information that's going on right now. But, anyways, my name is uh, Packy Savinus, and um, I've been doing activism probably since 2008, since the uh, stock market crash. Um, at that time, I was a web developer. I was uh, developing interactive online books for Simon & Schuster, uh, a couple other major publications out there. And then, you know, I was I was a young kid at the time. I had no idea that the stock market could affect, you know, future transactions in my life, et cetera, et cetera. Well, anyways... Um, after the 2007-2008 clash, um, I was getting ready to sign a deal with uh, Microsoft, and one day, uh, good old Microsoft gave me a call and said, hey, uh, we're not going to move forward with this project. Kind of a, what's that? Uh, you, you dropped out for a second. You're back, dude. Go ahead. Oh, Okay. Um, I was just saying, you know, back in the day during 2008 when the stock market crashed, that you know, I was getting ready to do a, a you know, a, getting ready to sign a deal with uh, Microsoft. And at that time, um, you know, a couple months later after the crash, Microsoft came back to me and said, "Hey, we're not going to be able to go through go through with this deal." And at that time, I realized, well, why aren't you guys going to go through with this deal? And they said, well, you know, the stock market just crashed like seven, 800 points, however much it was back then. And I was like, well, what does that have to do with anything? Because I was a dumb kid, and I had no idea what yeah. was going on. And uh, at that time, then, I started to actually, you know, follow the same path that everybody else follows. And, you know, the first thing you do is you turn on the news. You go to Fox News, you go to CNN, you go to MSNBC, and you start to figure out what's going on, you know. So I started listening to people, and, you know, I started to listen to Beck, and I started to listen to, uh, you know, just anyone I could to find out, you know, what's really going on in the world here? How could these numbers affect my life the way they did? But, you know, really what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to go through my little bio on climateviewer.com. I'm not going to read it word for word, but I'm just going to, Talk about what happened, kind of excelled me, and kind of threw me out on YouTube. Um, at a time, there, there was a time whenever I was on YouTube, and I would get anywhere from, you know, and this isn't a lot, but I'd get anywhere from, you know, 5,000 to 20,000 views a video within a day. But I started when, you know, like Dutch Sense started, Prophetic Seer started, and then I started to notice a lot of infighting, and so I up my YouTube channel down. Well, now I'm coming back. You know, I'm coming back full fledged. But, anyways, let me go ahead and get started. So, I, you know, I'm just uh, I'm I'm actually an award winning web designer slash developer. I'm also an artist, um, a husband, a truth seeker, and uh, after a while, I started to realize back in 2011. I came across some videos about chemtrails, which confirmed, you know, a couple of my suspicions. And what I did is I created videos about the correlation between increased water weight building stresses around the New Madrid fault line and how these unnatural clouds may be contributing to the growing problem. Well, what I did was is on 3-8-2011, now this was three days prior to the Fukushima or Fukushima Daiichi nuclear melt, uh, meltdown, I made a video 
that changed my whole entire life. And a couple weeks later, after making this video, I was working for Saatchi and Saatchi. And Saatchi and Saatchi is one of the biggest digital firms out there. I was one of the lead digital developers. Well, anyways, I didn't realize everybody at work was watching my videos. And the, one of the VPs, which is kind of like, you know, I mean, just to have a VP come to your little cubicle is a little weird. But uh, one of the VPs, I can't remember his name, of uh, Saatchi and Saatchi, came to me and recommended that I actually quit my six-figure job and focus at what I'm doing great at. And um, I'm internationally known for my web design, graphic design, and development uh, through awards and uh, working with some of the biggest retailers out there. So it came to a shock to me that somebody would tell me this is what I needed to do with my life. So what did I do? I quit my successful, pretty much 100% comfortable career and started making YouTube videos every single day. And as you all know, making videos doesn't make you money, and money does not bring you fulfillment. Now, I'm just reading a little bit off of my bio here because I just don't want to go over it. But anyways, so I ended up losing practically everything I had. I lost my house. I, I gave away all my clothes. Um, but in turn, at this time in my life, what I have learned is I have learned to live without, which is what I think every prepper should do. Most oh, yeah. preppers will not... Most preppers will not take that risk. Most preppers will not give up everything, go homeless, and find out what it's like to live homelessly in this urban environment that we have. So that's what I did. And while I was out there running around, you know, talking about chemtrails, talking about, you know, I like politics. I'm more of a politic kind of guy. You guys know that about me. So, um but anyways, like I said, I made a video three days prior to Fukushima, and I talked about the water weight, and I learned this from Scott Buck and a lot of people that used to listen to me before. I used to quote him quite a bit, and he would talk about how the water weight would, also, would shift throughout the ocean and the currents, et cetera, et cetera, and what they would do is they would cause earthquakes. So I noticed a couple eight-pointers eight pop off, and I said, here, wait, listen, people. There's something bad getting ready to happen in this area. And I go on in the video and I talk about, you know, this was when Charlie Sheen was winning. So it's very important that I say that, too, because anytime you see a celebrity winning or if they bring a celebrity to light, I always notice something huge is getting ready to happen in the world or the United States, et cetera. Yeah, it's big distractions. Sometimes Huge. called fault flags, sometimes called psyops, mind warrior. There's all kinds of terms for that, but yeah, I hear you, dude. Well, um, yeah. guys, you can check Packy out at um, climateviewer.com slash Pacman report. Um, you just click on Cl Pacman report on the hosted sites, and you know, Packy puts out some pretty cool videos. You really got to check them out. Um, and he's a great fellow. We've had some really, really long discussions on the phone that should have been recorded, <laughs> obviously. Um, but yeah, um, Packy, uh, you know, he's 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 really good with um, you know finding all of the the articles that I miss. I tell you what, um, for a while there, that's all I watch to get my news. And uh, he's really busy with some uh, life changes, I believe. But, you know, we're going to get him back in the mix here real shortly, right, Packy? Oh, yeah, I'm geared up now. The beautiful thing is is that after giving everything up, now everything has been given back to me. Yeah, so dude. that's just how it works. So now I've got my own office. I've got a great computer now. I've, you know, I mean, everything's set. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm pumped about this radio show. You know, I'm pumped about hanging out with Jim. I'm, hum I'm pumped about hanging out with uh, Bill. I'm pumped pumped about hanging out with Christina, learning as much as I can. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to talking about a lot of this stuff. So, you know, go ahead, Jim. Well, speaking of um, Bill, I want to talk a little bit about Bill. Um, while Bill Nar was the first guy to come on and help me with Climate Viewer, and Bill has done a lot of heavy lifting over the last month, um, well, over the last couple months, and, uh, you know, he's been my shoulder to cry on. He's been my, you know, rock when I needed one. And I really appreciate Bill 
Um, let's bring him into the call. Bill, are you uh, able to hear me, dude? Yeah, I hear you fine. You're live on the air, brother. Welcome to Climate Viewer Radio. And I just want to say it live in front of everybody. I love you, man. And I love Packy. And I love my little Climate Viewer family. We love you, Thank too, Jim. Consider that an honor, man. Seriously. Um, Bill has, has been there for me during my darkest hours, which occurred around uh, this past Christmas. We'll get into that at a, in a later show date. Um, but building this Climate Viewer uh, News website has been a monumental task, and Bill has helped out by running the Facebook page, um, adminning on the forum. He was my first writer. Um, Bill has been, you know, a lot to me, and I really appreciate Bill, and I hope you guys will definitely check out um, Bill's clippings. We call them the dick clippings. Um, <laughs> Bill, why don't you tell everybody about yourself, if you don't mind. Well, dick clippings comes from the fact that I'm a retired private investigator. So there's the association with that. So I hope nobody takes offense. I think it's kind of quirky. I think it's great. I think it's witty. Um, I've been around. I'm an old guy compared to you younger folks. Um, So my work history is varied, but my last endeavor in my work career was uh, in the security industry, private investigator, Department of Criminal Justice certified instructor, uh, force protection, firearms uh, instructor, uh, anything dealing with physical security and electronic security uh, I've been a part of. I've done some major contracts with um, the powers that be, we'll call them. Uh, I'm no longer in that genre anymore. I am retired, and uh, I believe in attempting to get the truth out that we're not being notified of through mainstream media and other media sources. And, and I believe you, Bo. Um, Bill Bill is an honest, just huggable guy, and I, I, I hope you guys will definitely check him out on um, Climate Viewer News, you know, and then go bug him on Facebook and Twitter. Um Let's let's get to it. What what is Climate Viewer News? Um, Climate Viewer News is an attempt to do it right, um, where so many I believe have failed. Um, the biggest failure I see in the activist community is there is no pragmatism. Um, really, and 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 pa- packing bill, I got. You, I want you guys to be a part of this discussion, of course. So you know, feel free to jump in at any point. Um, but what I see as a constant is um, people, you know, it's accepted that, you know, I think it was 70% of people agree that mainstream media is bogus. They now see through the lies. They understand that it's paid propaganda, it's commercials, and, you know, just all, you know, pay for payola, pay for play, um, and controlled by, you know, entities like the CFR and the White House, apparently, lately. So, People have to still find a place that is trustworthy, and in trying to discern who to trust, um, that's the biggest problem. You, you think you can trust the the truthers out there, and in a lot of cases, you know these people may be, you know, telling the truth on a daily basis and really trying to be about it, and then at some point it changes for them. And then they become egomaniacs, or they're, it's all about money, or how much, how many clicks you get. And we want Climate Viewer News to not be about that. Um, Climate Viewer News has cost me personally three thousand dollars since I started three years ago, out of pocket, and it's completely run on donations. And so far this year, we've gotten enough donations to cover paying for the server for the year. That's it. So this is not something I do for money. I could put advertising on it today and make a whole lot of money. I still have not. I choose not to because I want somebody to be able to trust us. Um, And I just don't see that many of the places I go. So with this high moral goal of being a trustworthy source for news on the Internet that isn't about, you know, exploring every conspiracy out there, unless it's conspiracy fact, something that's provable, something that if I prove it, 
may impact the lives of people around you. I'm not interested in, you know, trying to prove that aliens are real because in reality that aliens probably more than likely statistically almost impossible that they aren't real. So there are aliens. Um, that's great. What I care about is things that are going to affect our health and, and things that we can control. And I think that through the use of all of these new fascinating technologies that we have out here, it's within our grasp. If we can find somebody who's willing to really, you know, step step up to the bar and really raise the level of the discussion and be pragmatic about it where in their solution based. If you're into chemtrails and you don't have a plan, then you're part of the problem. If you don't like nuclear waste, if you don't like GMOs, and you're not voting with your dollars, telling everybody you know that they should change their mind, that they're wrong, and then explaining to them in the most civil way possible that they're wrong and they need to understand these things, then we'll never change. We'll never, ever get anywhere. Um, what do you What do you guys think about that? Packy? Well, I think you're absolutely right. And I think people need to realize that CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, they're all state-run TV. Um, it's pretty much just that simple. I know it's a profound fact, but it is the matrix that we live in. And uh, the masses think that state-run television, you know, would never, uh, I guess, happen here, but ironically, it's it's right here in our plain sight. And I think the goal of climateviewer.com is to not read talking points and not, you know, we're not, we're not reading off cards here. We're just, we're, we're going to talk to you guys. We're going to bring the knowledge that we can to you guys. We want to know everything that you guys want us to talk about. We'll go ahead and research things. If we already know it, we'll go ahead and tell you. But, uh, you know, I mean, that's pretty much why MSNBC, for example, can have ratings in the absolute tank and still survive because it is state-run television. And Climate Viewer News is not state-run. And we are going to be separate from the rest. We are not going to provide you with what they like to call fear porn. Um, like Jim was mentioning earlier about how, you know, a lot of a lot of websites out there, we they know that people thrive off of this fear. And yeah. I think this will be a great show in the future is when we talk about the slave speech. And I'm not gonna get into that now, but I'm just gonna bring that keyword up. And Yeah, we're gonna talk I've about known- slave speak sooner than you think. Um because it, really it, it goes to the heart of what we're talking about. Um, you know, since you brought it up. You know, it, there is a tool that we want to teach you at Climate Viewer that will make you a deadly weapon against fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And it is called Slave Speak. And it is about high level descriptors and low level descriptors, words that either have meaning or don't have meaning. And once you learn which words have no meaning or ha- have different meanings based on the individual who's using them, um, you can throw those in the ocean. And what you're left with is either a person telling you the truth or trying to manipulate you. And this is a tool anybody can learn. And we're going to continue to beat that hammer repeatedly and give it to you in context. So the goal of this show, hopefully, in the near future is... We will have, you know, some big event's going to happen. Let's say Sandy Hook or some, you know, something that everybody's going nuts about. And then we'll go and we'll show you where people are being manipulative. It's that simple. And then ask why. Why are they being manipulative? You know, what is their agenda? Um, the people that I've brought on to Climate Viewer so far, I don't see them as pe- people having an agenda. Um, they are people who care about it and their agenda is that they care and they they want it to get better um but there's a lot of people out there that pretend to be about it pretend to care and are part of this alternative media and they're really ruining it for everybody so our goal is to set a standard 
And then anybody that is willing to meet that standard and try to be not scary, pragmatic, solution-based, that they have a home in climateviewer.com. And it's a free home. You know, I'm not, I'm not charging anybody for this stuff. I I spend hours on end doing it, and it's so that we can bring it to a, pl- a a place where people can trust the information, know that if they go and they take it to their grandma, it's not going to be filled with offensive material, and you know something that's going to empower them to really um, do something about it. And you know, up to this point, I've been creating the site. So what we're talking about now is something that still needs to be created. Um, We need to have solutions, lots of solutions, and find the groups that are actively seeking these solutions and promote them. And, you know, all of the groups from now on, you know, we're going to have to just be that way. If you're one of the the people who are out there that is part of the problem, we're going to have to say so. Um, Because enough is enough. There, there, our community, our truther movement is is not doing what it needs to do. And I think that with some careful coaxing and some kind-hearted people, we can raise the bar to where, um, where we're really getting something done that matters. And it's not about ego and it's not about money, um, but that's going to be a long battle. So um, yeah, we've got about 30 uh, seconds left, guys. You want to say something? No, nah, Bill, did you want to say something real quick? 30 seconds left, dude. Well, 30 seconds. I mean, we're dealing with the Hegelian dialect, which would be false flags, and we're also dealing with perception management, which all tie into slave speak. And, you know, you've got to pay attention to how we're being manipulated into doing thinking and behaving based on those three uh, issues there, slave speak, Hegelian dialect, false flag, and uh, perception management. It's real important. And then we have to worry about uh, the fear porn. You know, I believe there are some uh, good guys out there doing stuff, but they, they're playing more into fear than they are the actual story itself. That's right, dude. Guys, we're going to go to commercial real quick. Uh, please stay tuned. And, uh, what I have to we'll say be back in about three to five. Much more than a minute, but it's serious and important, so please don't go away. Hi, I have a question for you. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Do you want a company that provides good quality ingredients and does not use artificial sweeteners? Look no further. Genesis Pure has a complete lineup of health and wellness, sports performance, and superfruit juices like noni and mangosteen that are pure, wild harvested with no binders and fillers. The philosophy is simple. Cleanse the body of toxins, balance the body's pH and hormones, and build the body nutritionally. Every race has a starting line, and yours is a cleanse, balance, build. Sign up for at least a 25% discount and include auto ship of at least one product to start building up 20% back in points for free products. It's a win-win. Help fund our operation while you fund your body nutritionally. Start your journey at genesispure.com backslash freedomizer health. Again, that is genesispure.com backslash freedomizer health. There are a lot of problems with Common Core. I don't even have time to go into most of them. But a step in the right direction would be to give local communities, teachers, parents control over their schools so they can design curriculums and standards to best meet the needs of their students and get the federal government out of education. I'm Angie Morelli, and I'm with CMO Free Vegas. So what are we going to do about this now? Well, to begin with, we advocate the labeling of genetically engineered food, or foods with GMOs. Regardless of how you feel about the GMO issue, we can agree that we should at least have a choice of being informed about what we put into our bodies. We won't have a choice until these foods are properly labeled. We must remember who we're fighting in this battle. 
we are fighting corporations selling us poison backed by corporations making us poison. And these corporations will only respond to one kind of vote, the vote that we make with our dollars. Recently, Yoplait faced so much criticism over high fructose corn syrup that they removed it from all of their yogurts. Right before and after the march against Monsanto in May, we saw major corporations like Whole Foods, Target, and Chipotle make major announcements about deciding to label and or phase out GMOs. This is happening because of us, because we will solve this as making demands as consumers first. Starting right now, we're going to boycott corn. This is all you have to do, is don't buy corn. Corn on the cob, corn in a can, corn in a mix at a restaurant, any visible kernels of corn. All we are asking for people to do right now is to boycott corn. This is going to be a clear, completely simple message that will definitely get back to its makers. We won't stand for poison. We won't stand for cronyism. And that is why we march against Monsanto. Hello, everyone. Proof is here. I want to let you know about our latest promotion on our freedomizerradio.com website. Our chat client, Bark, B-A-R-C dot com, is hosting a micro-Bitcoin giveaway while supplies last. All you have to do is go to freedomizerradio.com, join our chat room, create a screen name, and type to your friends. And some micro-Bitcoins will fall from the sky. Not only that, the more people that are typing, there will be some random lotteries as well. So just for typing to your friends, you can earn some micro-Bitcoins. So who knows how long this will last, but join us now, freedomizerradio.com. And we're back, guys. Uh, Welcome back to Climate Viewer Radio. I'm Jim Lee, and we're here with Bill Narr, Pecky, and I believe we have Radchick on the line now. Let me get her in here real quick. Radchick, is that you? Yeah. Welcome to the show, honey. Hey. How's it going? So, going really well, I think. <laughs> How you for, doing, for, Red? For first Sounds timer. good so far. It makes me want to be part of this team. But, <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> what do you mean, make you be part? You already are. <laughs> so, um, everybody, this is Radchick, uh, host of Nuked Radio and Radchick Radiation Research and Mitigation. Also, Mutation Watch, you guys have got to get involved in that. Why don't you tell them about yourself and about that, Um, Christina? Thanks, Jim. Pretty right on. Uh, I got started doing this a few months after the Fukushima accident happened, and I was just so um, upset and alarmed that uh, things weren't being reported in the news at all of any importance especially health effects, and I knew um, quite a bit about it already from the past career that I had been in, in clinical research and dealing with kids with cancer. And so I just started talking about it and and going on other people's uh, radio shows. Charlie McGrath was one of the first people to have me on, and now I've got a show on rent, uh, the fourth Friday of the month. And uh, basically, you know, we're just trying to reach as many people as we can until we find people that know what uh, solutions we can propose or adhere to. And I think a lot of it's just going to have to be to circumvent all these agencies and, and everything that's already in place to mislead people and to control the information. You know, we're just providing other outlets for that, for um, for them to get the truth about these subjects. And, you know, every day I I meet or, you know, have a conversation with someone who knows something that I don't know about. And, you know, we just continue to gather data and and put it into as many different uh, ways that it can be, you know, digested by the public. Because a lot of the things that we talk about are very, you know, complex um, situations that have uh, parental outcomes in terms of health and so when you you mitigate for things like radiation in your environment, you know you're helping with all the the toxic exposures that we've already had for years and years. And I think you know it's never too late to start and just you know paying attention to our health and and improving you know our awareness of all these subjects is really important. And we meet a lot of really cool people doing it too. 
Yeah, yeah don't we? Do the exact same things as us. Yeah. Well, I can and, tell you and, one thing, Rad. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead, dude. I was just going to say, I can tell you one thing, uh, Rad Chick. Uh, you are actually reaching Europe. And um, because I sell a lot of uh, nutritional supplements, organic supplements, uh, uh, a lot of stuff like iodine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, I was speaking to a lady, and she heard your name in Denmark. And she yeah. has now become one of our best uh, uh, customers out of Denmark that's buying the uh, uh, potassium iodide for her thyroid because she's worried about the radiation exposure that's hitting over there. And what I find amazing is how many people are actually listening in Europe rather than here in America when we know that the jet stream ran all the way across and, you know, eventually hit you know hit over into the U.K., et cetera. So I just wanted to let you know and reach out and let you hear that because I haven't told you that because I haven't spoke to you in a while. So. It's great to hear, but, you know, I, I find that Europeans are more awake than Americans big time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and with it's the radiation sad. stuff, a lot of that has to do with, you know, what they dealt with from the Chernobyl accident and the, you know, various cover-ups that occurred in their, um, you know, their countries following that situation. And they had the U.K. Sellafield situation. So they're a little bit more up on that and food safety issues and and both of my parents were first generation Europeans. My dad was from uh, Hungary and my mother from Germany and I grew up in a very awake household. Um, My my parents like never watched TV. We had talk radio on all the time when I was a kid Cool. and I kind of grew up around talk radio and um, they had friends that worked as like COINTEL in the U.S. government, so they always knew everything that was going on, and I kind of thought my parents were crazy because they weren't like everybody else's parents, you know, who who watched TV and were, you know, all caught up in, like, you know, like, status and and things like that and celebrity, and and my, my family just wasn't like that, and I wanted to be more like that, and I actually, like, had some pretty big arguments with my dad, um... When, when Bush was president, because I was making more money than I had ever made in my life when he was president, and I thought things were working fine, because that's really all I cared about during that point in my life, was job and career and money and my house and things like that, and now I don't have any of those things anymore, and I realized, like, everything that my parents had told me all these years was right, and I've actually gone back and tried to make the connections with some of the people that they um, dealt with and who who knew of this truth, you know, decades ago. And they had bugged out to Canada in the 80s because they were just sick of the U.S. at that point and they didn't want to live here anymore. They didn't like what they were seeing coming down already back then. And, um, you know, now I kind of wish I could... (laughs) I bugged out with them at the time. I don't like being in the U.S. either, and and the government almost scares me more than the radiation and all the other things. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? So uh, that's that's become a real big like, and maybe part of the reason why I want to speak out so much about it because I I really didn't pay attention to those things for so many years and lost so much time, and I feel like, you know, I have four daughters who are now, you know, young adults. And, and the youngest is 19, and I feel like, gosh, you know, I kind of taught them a lot of the wrong things, and now I have to undo a lot of that and say, you know, mom was wrong about this or that, and this is what we should be paying attention to. And they're all kind of developing their own interests in, like, environmental issues and things. Yeah. So that's good to see we're all kind of waking up together. But I wasn't like this all my life, even though my parents were. <laughs> Well, but you bring up a great point. It's great that um, you, Europeans do pay attention. They don't trust the news or government the way that people here kind of blindly trust. Yeah, they do. You know, yeah. There's just been such a effective like propaganda campaign, campaign all of these years, and especially you know all the the wars that we've been involved in, and like all all the reasons that we're always told for these wars end up to be you know it was more about resources and oil and 
you know, um, yeah, the poppy seeds and things like that. And so you just start to see, you know, there's a, there's an agenda behind everything. And if you follow the money, who's in control, who wants the power, what kind of power plays are being made, it becomes just so apparent. And to others, that might look like conspiracy, but this is kind of the history of the United States. This is like how things have been for a very long time. Yeah. We know, Rad, uh, having lived in Europe uh, quite a bit of my life, you know, I have to agree with you on, on perception. Um, you know, because the news that I got in Europe was not the news that they were portraying here in the United States. So there was a big difference in what we were getting here in the States versus what, you know, we were getting in Europe. So there's a lot of changes there. And, of course, then Europe has always been on this natural kick when it comes to consumable products, whereas the United States keeps adding more and more and more junk to the uh, processed foods that we eat. So that's just a side, light, side note there. Yeah. yeah. Most people don't know that in just about every cereal there's a common additive called DHT. And... I'm not going to debate with you whether or not it's good for you or not, but t- riddle me this. In Europe, the the cereal companies make the exact same cereal all natural. So yes. riddle me this. Why do the Europeans, who have complained about it, get good food, and Americans, who haven't complained about it, get poisonous food? But well, there's your point. Is- have complained about it or allowed enough. And, of course, then you've got the conglomerates that got all the money to keep it from being changed. Yeah. I think it's because we're armed. <laughs> Sorry. If you read any of the stuff about the globalist New World Order movement with the U.N. and all of, all of that, yeah, they want to take your guns. So <laughs> they definitely want to take your guns. They can barely wait. They'll have bells on. Yeah, and ask yep. anyone from the UK or Australia like how that's worked out for them, and they'll tell you, don't let them take your guns, whatever you do. And it's always over something simple. I mean, not simple. I mean, it is a tragedy, whatever happens, but it's, it, it doesn't come from like a massive, like, huge exposure, you know, like uh, you know, like five th- or five hundred people get shot. It will come. It, it seems like I think in Australia it was like a shooting of like twelve people, and they actually took all their. And I, I don't yeah. quote me on this. I could be wrong, but it was just a small incident, and then they passed this law like they did practically. You know, uh, the Federal Reserve back in nineteen thirteen. You know, two days before Christmas when nobody was in Parliament. And, exactly. Uh, that's exactly what they do. So they're going to wait for that opportune moment, you know. But I, I think the reason why they're poisoning us here and uh, the reason why pushing it so hard and why genetically modified foods are not, you know, allowed to be in other countries is because we are the most armed to the teeth country, period. And that's all part of the New World Order agenda. So. Yeah, well, look at some of the major issues. Where have all of the major crises taken place as far as it goes with firearms? In gun-free zones. Yep. You know, and this last one, uh, Sandy Hook really has me bothered because there is so little information that was provided to the general public. I happen to believe that that was a false flag, and it didn't happen as it's been portrayed to us. I agree. What are y'all talking there's a there's a few good researchers who have really dug into Sandy Hook too, and it's one of one of the topics like you know it almost takes a, a lifetime of study to really understand everything that happened there, and I think a lot of people even in the truth movement are almost like afraid to go there because you just know it's going to be <laughs> you know such a rabbit hole, and I believe it was Sophia Smallstrom is one researcher who's put out a lot of really great material. And uh, there was recently a, another guy who, like, worked security at schools who was a former police officer who started speaking out about it, too. And, you know, these are all our brothers and sisters. I mean, they're they're not talking about, you know, the radiation, chemtrails, things like that, but they're, they're talking about uh, other things that are very important for our climate that we live in. And, you know, the, the false flags and um, the surveillance and all the things that, that come out of these um, types of situations, too. I mean, definitely a lot of P- 
people are more aware than they were a few years ago. I actually had a guy that um, was overheard a conversation that I had with um, Miss Milky and some other people at the pool in my apartment complex last year. And he came over to us and he said, you know, I just, I was listening to you guys talk and I was just wondering how come, like, other Americans don't know about what you're talking about? Like, how come no one in America seems to know that your government was behind 9-11 or had something to do with it? Because everybody in Europe knows that. Well, how about fluoride in the water and they're dumbing us down? <laughs> There, there are so yeah. many, re- so many reasons to care, people in the audience. <laughs> um, yeah, man, I, I, I go around. I like to do um, like a what ifs at the gas station. So, I'll walk outside and I'll see somebody standing there smoking a cigarette, and I'll point up at the sky and say, "What do you think that is? Cloud?" I said, "Really? You ever seen a straight cloud before?" And then they go, "You know, he's right." And honestly. I, you know, out of maybe a hundred people that I've asked that same question to, I've only had one person who knew anything about, you know, what they were, acid rain, you know, geoengineering, whatever you want to call them. But, I mean, even knew that it was a problem because people just don't even look up. They're so glued to their little cell phone or, you know, racing to their job or, you know, got to get home for that football game. And, you know, they don't have the mental headspace. <laughs> for for caring about stuff that takes time. You know, it's like I want my gratification now. You know, if you could get a video game that can be you can beat the whole game and feel gratified within 30 seconds, it'll be the greatest game of all time right now. Because people you know, that's when, all they when want. the population gets close to seeing something as truth, there's some major something in the mainstream media that's a distractor and takes everybody's attention away from what we really be, need to be looking at. And just like Packy said at the beginning of the show, when you start seeing, like, Charlie Sheen show up and stuff, there's something they don't want us to look at. Yeah, it sure does seem yeah, that's like that. I mean, it's point, more than coincidence. Packy. It's a good well, point. I mean, I just, I just remember, you know, Charlie Sheen was winning, and he was winning, and he was winning, and that's all that was all over the news. And then three days later, boom, you know, and then... Seven or eight months later, I hear about a tsunami bomb going off on the coast of Australia. You know, I don't know if that's what happened, but it seems like every time there's like an actor that's winning or losing or, you know, I mean, right now there's a lot of talk about Miley Cyrus, you know, and it's just, it's always something like that. It's, you know, I don't know. You tell me. Uh, it should be like blatantly obvious to people when you know certain channels want to cover Flight 370 for months on end, and meanwhile, you know we've got the NSA stuff going on. We got net neutrality going on. I mean, some of the biggest topics of my life. I mean, net neutrality is going to be one of the biggest ones, and nobody knows about it. I mean, they don't have a clue that right now they're talking about restructuring the entire Internet to where these greedy ISPs, Internet service providers, can charge companies like Netflix and YouTube to get preferred treatment on the Internet. So there's no longer a neutral Internet where everybody is provided at the same speed. If you come to climateviewer.com, you'll get it just as fast, if not faster, than if you go to, say, um, you know, Fox.com or CNN.com or my. In fact, I know my site's faster than theirs, but whatever. Um, with this restructuring, companies will be able to pay to say I get better bandwidth, and magically, you know, activists like us will become a, a, a thing of the past, and that's a very scary thought. Yeah, because we're priced out of the market. Yep. I was reading an article that they actually passed smaller scale with Facebook too where you can like pay to boost your post. Yeah. And think, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but that money's come from somewhere. Well and I mean you know, a, another huge thing. I mean, uh, I know all this net neutrality stuff is coming out. I've heard about a lot of it lately. I mean we talked about it a long time ago. Um, you know, what about the one hundred and two million people right now of working age Americans that do not have a job. Yeah. So, 
why would anybody pay attention to the news right now? Most people are worried about getting food. And who was it, Henry Kissinger, that said, uh, control, control the, the food. food, you control the population? Yeah. You know? Yep. So it's, uh, yeah, Rob, didn't you post an article sometime today about what Michigan's doing with, uh, you know, the little backyard farms with chickens and and that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, you can't own chickens anymore. And they're they're doing it under the guise of like you know antibiotics because of you know disease in animals and the use of antibiotics. So no one can have chickens anymore or any kind of small livestock on their property. And you know we we saw the the wood burning stove thing from the EPA a few months back, and you know then you can't you can't collect any rainfall, and they're just making everybody just entirely dependent on the food supply that they're going to be providing which yeah. is, you know, littered with, you know, genetically modified foods and things, which, you know, it's very difficult to find food nowadays that is safe to eat. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that that's going to get more difficult for people, too. And, you know, when I read stories like that, I, I was just telling my, my daughter, my youngest daughter, about it today, and she's like, that makes me want to go out and buy chicken. <laughs> I mean, it's just so long, or start a farm, or, you know, there's so many vacant lots around where you could be, you know, we could be farming our own produce and things like that, but, you know, the the laws are just, um, it's so skewed now, and and they're just making all of these things illegal and and difficult for anybody to be self-sufficient, because where you have this self-sufficiency, you have less dependence on government, and they want people to be dependent on them. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, I, I don't know who, anybody, you know, that if you put it to them that way would choose dependence. Um, that is so sad uh, that we're we're at that point where, you know, honestly, we're going to this robot economy. Um, you know, I, I really don't see how it's sustainable at all. When you know, we went from Henry Ford's robots to you know, the modern world where, you know, they're printing machine guns in their house with printers, you know. It, it, we're going to be very shortly coming up on a, a time where, you know, nobody produces anything. You know, we don't even need you to go near the field. The robots go out there, start of the day, they get all the food ready. So where does that leave us all? You know, I mean, we're already seeing the start of that, you know, this this crash of capitalism that it you know it, it eats itself every year it gets leaner and leaner till you're not in it yep. um, and that leads into you know all of the guillotines that are on military installations <laughs> and that's part of uh the affordable health care act that's actually in there so you know becoming dependent and then they've got to reduce that dependency some kind of way and who calls us useless eaters? That comes out of the UK, so that's what we all become. We're making a very sick society, and sick people too will be more dependent on health care, which the government is like, you know, continuously trying to get their hands into. And I had to go see a, a new doctor recently, and you know the, the paperwork that you have to sign now. I mean, you know, there's like four to ten pages of stuff that you have to sign off on for who can see your records and, you know, with HIPAA and all that. And there was a clause in there that I'd never seen before that stated in the event of a disaster I would release all of my information um, that the, the hospital would be able to release all of my information to local law enforcement to help um, family members find out where I am. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, I had to read it a couple times, and I'm like, in the event of a disaster, since when is there a disaster clause? Okay, and so to help find you, why do they need your medical information? Yeah, they, well, I, I don't know. And I came across this, um, this quote late last night from Aldous Huxley, a member of the Tavistock group, when he was speaking to... California Medical School in 1961, and the quote is, there will be in the next generation or so a pharmacological method of making people love their servitude and produce, producing dictatorship without tears, so to speak, producing a kind of painless concentration camp for entire societies 
so that people will in fact have their liberties taken away from them, but will rather enjoy it because they will be distracted from any desire to rebel by propaganda or brainwashing or brainwashing enhanced by pharma pharmacological methods. And this seems to be the final revolution. Well, wasn't that the precursor to the movie Soylent Green? <laughs> It might have been. It's been a while since I've seen that movie. You need to see it. Yeah, hey, is that real quick? Did you notice yeah. how this all started to excel um, and speed up and move real fast as soon as we got our new Pope Francis in? Hmm. A lot of major that, changes there, too. That's an interesting fellow. <laughs> that's all i got to say about that. That's a very interesting fellow. He's a mover Jesuit. and shaker, apparently. Jesuit. Uh, yeah, he's definitely a Jesuit, but what I noticed was as soon as that man got in, I started to realize more people waking up, more people going to sleep, and him doing his job exactly the way. And that's a whole new show, so I'm not going to get into that, but I know that yeah. you've been... Yeah. Well, let me know, give you I just this wanted to quick. throw that in there. <laughs> um, what we're talking about for the people who aren't familiar with this whole globalist thing, and I, I found this is pretty interesting. It's got a bullet list. Check this out. The United World Federalist Group, and here's their uh, their goals. Number one, to achieve permanent peace through universal disarmament enforced by law. Number two, to release for the satisfaction of human needs the resources that at, at present must be used in continuous preparation for war. So no more preparing for war. Sounds great. To maintain and promote human freedom and mobilize support for free institutions among all peoples to secure all people's right to develop according to their own customs and traditions. So here's the thing about it. It started with uh, Roosevelt. We've got about 30 seconds. We started with Roosevelt. It's called the Four Freedoms. And it blossomed from this what seemed like a really good idea into, hey, let's have the U.N., take everybody's guns, only the U.N. has guns, and, uh, you know, that's going to be a good thing. <laughs> All right, for anybody who's listening out there, please give us a call. Our area code is 347-324-3704. Call in, give us your opinion, thoughts, and beliefs. We'd be interested in hearing from you. Definitely. And we'll be right back, guys. Vaccines are required for students, employees, immigrants, military members, and international travel. Do you know how to legally avoid them? This is vaccine rights attorney and Freedomizer radio host Alan Phillips. My vaccine exemption ebook can help you avoid the mistakes that have cost others their exemption rights. Get the authoritative guide to vaccine legal exemptions, an ebook available at freedomizerradio.com and vaccinerights.com. Let freedom read. Did you know most Americans know nothing or very little about the legal system? I am the Rose, Rose Colombo, longtime legal activist, legal coach, legal advocate, and the author of Fight Back Legal Abuse, Irwin Award winner, and also my latest political satire, Obamacare Dinosaurs, Rednecks, and Radicals. A political satire exposing the evil agendas of Obamacare and redistribution of wealth that leaves you with a thought-provoking ending. Will mankind survive, or will the U.S. natural-born citizen become extinct? It's available at Amazon.com. You can also visit my website, at www.fightbacklegalabuse.com for more information. So order your copy today and empower yourself with the knowledge before injustices come knocking on your back door unexpectedly. U.S. trade negotiators are pushing to complete the TPP this year. They're trying to keep it under the radar. The best way to stop the TPP is to drag it into the light of day. Right now, negotiators have appointed approximately 600 corporate lobbyists to serve as cleared advisors on the TPP, 
while refusing to release any of their negotiating proposals for public review. The corporate media is unlikely to inform the public about the TPP. We need to do it ourselves. Get ready for the epic new documentary adventure ride of your life. Shade the motion picture. Hub you into the globalist domain and embellish the Burma's film. Nothing in this world works the way you think it does. Nothing. Governments do not operate the way you think they do. Banks do not do what you think they do. The police department is not here for what you think it is. Nothing in your world works the way you think it does. We have never let them know that their world government has been identified and they thought they just closed the world economy to bring in a worldwide police state. But if you did it, it's going to bring them down. You have to stand up. Speak up. Speak out. Shade the motion picture. Order your copy of the DVD today at ShadeTheMotionPicture.com. Hello again, Freedomist. Proof is here, and I want to talk to you about a brand new soda maker called SodaStream. Now, the Proof House has had SodaStream for about a year, and we love the thing. We use it quite often. With SodaStream, you can have fresh-made soda in seconds. One of the big things we like about it is that there's no high-fructose corn syrup and no aspartame. There's over 60 flavors, or you can create your own. Not just sodas, they also have iced teas and energy drinks. Here at the Proof House, we make egg cream sodas all the time. Some other facts to consider here, there's no electricity, no more wasted bottles and cans, and the most important thing is that it tastes great. Keep in mind, too, this is a perfect family present for Christmas, or, hey, just surprise the family with something great. Also, for a limited time, there's free shipping, so go to FreedomizerRadio.com and look for the SodaStream link, and I hope you check out the product. That's SodaStream right on FreedomizerRadio.com. And we're back with Climate Viewer Radio. Um, we've got Packy on the line with us, Radchick, Bill Nar, the whole Climate Viewer team's here, the Climate Viewer family. And uh, we've got uh, two callers on hold, uh, Let's go ahead and bring in our first caller, Jim Sanders. Uh, Jim? Yes. Are you there, Jim? Yes, I'm here. Hey, Jim, how's it going, man? What do you want to talk about? I wanted to bring up the issue with chemtrails. I thought it, uh, since it's with Climate Viewer, I thought it might be a good thing to talk about. Sure, uh, what do you want to know? What do you want to add? Uh, Well, I used to work for Continental Airlines and did a lot of, uh, work um, with moving the airplanes, starting them up, and doing all kinds of things with Continental. And I know uh, that uh, you know, see an airplane flying through the air. They they have certain patterns that they have, but not just that. But airplanes aren't designed to backfire, and occasionally you'll see what we call chemtrails have a backfire moment where they'll stop the chemtrail and then they'll start the chemtrail back up later. Yeah, well, I know what you're talking about. They'll say that that is uh, just condensation, contrails. Well, that's not true. Airplanes do not do that. And uh, that's one thing I haven't heard anyone bring up is an airplane doesn't backfire when it's flying in the air at 35,000 feet in the air. Um, nor does uh, it, you know how your car, your car will backfire or your diesel truck yeah. will back, you know, you'll get smoke. That doesn't happen. And uh, being privy to uh, a lot of airports and stuff that I used to be in, I, I grew up at an airport, my dad was the executive, uh, one of the executives there in Indianapolis Airport. So I grew up around them, and I just thought I'd bring out the issue that airplanes don't backfire, and those aren't. When you see a a the kin trail that lasts for a long time, that is uh, somebody spraying something. That's not good for us, which we all already know that. But 
the issue was back. They don't backfire while they're in the middle of flying through the air. I fully agree with you, Jim. Um, let me let me clear up a couple things for the audience. They may be scratching their head. Um, chemtrails. He's referring to the white plane, the white lines that come from airplanes. They're also referred to as contrails, persistent contrails. I like to call them chemtrails because it is a chemical trail coming out of the exhaust ports of an airplane. Um, the debunker community would have you believe they're just water vapor, and that's not a problem. First of all, water vapor is a greenhouse gas. That's a bad thing. Putting all that water up there, bad for the planet. Second of all, it's full of acid, sulfur, sulfuric acid, also called acid rain. That's bad for the environment. Thirdly, what you're saying is true. If there was a break in the stream, then that's because of exhaust thrusting. So we are now going to say that, what, did the guy cut his engine off? Come on. The guy didn't cut his engine off in mid-flight and then turn it back on. I've seen several videos like you're talking about. The most um, startling for me was there were two military planes flying uh, you know, pretty much wingtip to wingtip, and an E-3 AWACS drops out of formation, and his chemtrails, which are extremely thick, um, you know, having seen a lot of these, they go away. And then suddenly... And he's dropping out of formation, so I'm like, what, did he cut the gas off, you know? And then it cuts on real big, like you're saying. It's like a boom coming back out of it, and he's taking off again. Um, so I've seen what you're talking about. I think it's highly uh, suspect. Uh, well, you it, know, it would be, it, if, if an airplane backfires, it's going to lose the ability to go forward in forward yeah. motion and drop in in uh, its... Uh, um, height, or not—that's not the correct word—but it's going to drop in its uh, altitude. How, yeah, how high it is. It, it's just going to act like a a drop of rain. It's going to fall down. The altitude will just go straight down. And if an airplane backfired, that's what would happen. And what it's, it's yeah. A, well, a mute issue where they try to debunk that. That's, you know, airplanes would be f- dropping out of the sky all the time if that happened. Well, we we know that, you know, just on the tip of things, there are several hundred, if not thousands, of additives that are added to these gasolines. If you go look at any of those additives, go look at the MSDS sheets for it, what you're going to see time and time again is trade secret written on it. Another thing yeah. you're going to see on those additives is do not dispose of in water. Right. So you, you riddle me this. If a contrail is just water and it says don't dump in water, why are we burning it into water that rains down into water? It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, if anybody in the chemtrail world wants to do something about this, all you really got to do is look at the types of gas. There's 20, 30, 40 of them. They're all made from, you know, different companies. They have different regulations. They use different compositions, none of which, when I look at them, they say environmental data section. No environmental data has been checked on this chemical. So none of it's been tested. They do not care. Um, And that's why we're seeing these extremely persistent contrails is because, is that uh, Jim's phone feeding back that I'm hearing there? No, I'm I, I don't okay. think so. it, it sounds fine. Um, I was just making sure it wasn't like covering everything up. But yeah, in the end, we're talking about a dirty industry that is, you know, trade secret, trumping public safety. The the you have all of these chemicals that are added to anti-static agents, antibacterial agents, um, ice crystal uh, formation inhibitors um, to per, 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 uh, what is it? to improve coking factors on the engines. All of these chemicals, they end up in this big soupy mess out the back end of the plane, and there are scientific camps that want to, you know, debate both sides of whether they should stay or they're a bad problem. But long story short, Jim, we're working on a documentary. (laughs) So it's a very, very complicated topic, man. I've been researching it for three years. I know that Bill's also interested in it. Packy's interested in it. Um, Ratchik, don't get into chemtrails, whatever you do. Whatever you do, just leave it alone. <laughs> uh, Jim Saunders, if yeah, you go to climateviewernews.com, 
uh, Jim Lee has got a lot of information related to uh, the topic that you uh, have brought up, and I think quite a bit of your questions could be answered there. It's uh, He's got a wealth of information, and I think it would be of great benefit to you. Oh, I'll definitely go look, yes. And, hey, Jim, um, I want to say thanks for calling in, man. I really appreciate it. I know well, this is your first say, radio show. <laughs> yes, thanks for keeping up the good work. You do Absolutely. excellent work. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Jim. So and, and Jim, um, I'd also like to suggest when when you go back there, make sure you check out an article. It's called Kim Trails and the Lies Between the Lines, and that's on ClimateViewer dot com. Um, just okay. just search it, Lies Between the Lines. I think I have it on the geoengineering page as well. And there's also a Kim Trail timeline on there. If you just check that stuff out, it'll more than get you started, brother. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, right. next call. Right. Letting me call in, and it's been nice listening to you. I'll continue to listen to the rest of the show. Thanks for calling right. in, Jim. Yeah. God bless you. Thank next you, caller up is uh, Dennis Nestor. I think this will come into Radchick's area of expertise because he's uh, nuclear waste retired. I believe this is Mr. Roy Process. Let's check him out. Hey, Dennis, uh, welcome to Climate Viewer Radio. Well, thank you. Um, Good to talk with you. I Can I hang want... up? Go ahead. Yeah, Jim. Okay. okay. Um, I just want to give a solution for nuclear waste, which is now 33 years old now, known as the Roy process. It was invented by a nuclear physicist, Professor Emeritus Ratha R. Roy, who was born in Calcutta, India. And how he ended up in Arizona, I don't know political, and uh, it's very complicated. But I met him climbing a mountain, and uh, we became friends for 10 years, and uh, he told me what had happened to him, and this all happened before I met that, that day. I met him in 81, actually, and he invented this in 79 after a three-mile island melted down. So uh, Dr. Roy invented the Roy process to see if it was feasible and cost-effective to neutralize nuclear waste. And it could be done with existing machinery and existing technology. Uh, It's essentially backwards engineering. A nuclear plant adds neutrons to the nucleus until they make tonium-239 for atom bombs. The rest is just PR. And uh, uh, Dr. Roy simply reverses the process, and you can even generate electricity from the decay heat. So this is a real solution for nuclear waste, which can be done with existing technology. And he made up then a, a patent application, and he showed it to independent scientists of a large company who wanted to see it. And then they said it was, these scientists said it was entirely feasible, their words. And a group of five lawyers representing that company met with Dr. Roy, who was a professor of physics at ASU. And he, he did this during the summer months when, in the uh, Three Mile Island melted down in uh, March. And he spent the summer to see if it was possible. And it was. So these lawyers offered him $5 million for the patent rights. And then Dr. Roy was about to sign, and then they said, the lawyers said, it's not going to be developed by Chelt. So they wanted to buy it to kill it. So Dr. Roy refused, and then ASU tried to sue Dr. Roy and claim it was their property once they found out it was real. And he has spent $30,000 of his own money just to prove that he invented his own um, process. Yeah, that patent process is a beast, isn't it? I mean, even he had to show in court that the light that illuminated the paper was in his own house. It came down to that. But uh, it's real. And I knew Dr. Roy, and I typed up his autobiography, which, which is tremendous. He was very famous in Europe during the war and everything. And he knew uh, the grandchildren of Madame Curie 
he had an open invitation any time he was in town that they recognized him in his work. So, I mean, I could go on and on, but it, it was uh, fortuitous for me. We met each other at the right time. He was alone and I was alone. And he told me what had happened. So I, I typed up his autobiography during that 10 years, and I knew all about it. So uh, I just went to offer that as a solution for nuclear waste, except that uh, in 1982, uh, the, the lobbyists got to a president, then President Reagan, and he signed the 1982 Nuclear Waste Policy Act, which made burial of nuclear waste federal policy. Thereby what a great policy. Al- yeah, thereby putting alternatives in limbo. <laughs> You know, so yeah. it's essentially illegal. So I've been waiting all this time, and it's still there, and uh, nothing has happened. You know, I actually know a, a physicist who has seen that um, demonstrated, and I don't know if it was Dr. Uh, Roy that had brought it to um, the Fermi plant no. in Michigan, but this this would have been in the early 80s. Um, he saw a demonstration of this, and it did work. And it was done in a uh, a machine that was about the size of an autoclave, like what you used to sterilize um, operating room equipment. That was something and, else. And they had neutralized, you know, a, a small amount of radioactive waste. It's it's pretty obvious that from what you're saying with um, with the patents and so forth, you know, someone obviously doesn't want this technology to be known. And we see that so many times, you know, with people who have developed, um, you know, cures for cancer, Simpson oil, and um, Isiac tea. And, you know, those people get run out of town when they bring to light and that goes against this, um, you know, sickness and depopulation agenda. Yeah, I, and, I believe it. And it, it's really unfortunate. I don't know if that process is feasible with so much waste is like what we're dealing with with the Fukushima accident because, you know, how, how are you going to neutralize all of the waste that's already gone into the Pacific or well, that's floating the whole, the around the Northern is, Hemisphere is, where that's landed on all of our farm fields and is, you know, being ingested by um, cows and animals and, and people who are, are eating those things too. Yes, so, when, um, you know, it's it's good to know that, that that does exist, but it's also sad that someone has probably gone through great lengths to make sure that that technology is not available to what? people who are interested in using it. Instead, you know, they want to play around with their boron moderators and, you know, in, yeah. in case the radioactive waste in glass like they've been trying to do at Hanford. And just today we learned there was an explosive event at Hanford about a month ago that was never reported. And it was a whistleblower who, who works at the plant that posted on Craigslist which is how people found out about that. And now you know why... I was going to say, now you know why the Department of Homeland Security is monitoring your Twitter, Facebook, your Pinterest, everything, because the news may break anywhere today, guys. But it'll definitely break... Is that the one where another plutonium leak came through? Pardon me? Uh, I was asking Christina at Hanford, was that plutonium leak? It was in the, in the plutonium area of processing. They had a pipe that exploded with uh, 12 workers in the vicinity. Okay. Yeah, I remember that story. Yeah. I appreciate you calling in, Dennis, and, and I know you send me a lot of stuff through, through email. You have a nice little email chain going <laughs> where you send articles to us all the time, and we really appreciate that. You know, but if it weren't for people like Dennis... You know, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Um, I believe it. And, Dennis, I appreciate you caring deeply about this. Um, I definitely will take the time to look into it. I have, I have been swamped preparing for the show, preparing the website for the oncoming onslaught. Um, there's a lot of preparation that goes into this, and I have not. your messages haven't gone unheeded, and we're definitely going to see what we can do with it, man. And I appreciate your call, man. Dennis, I have a question for you before we end the call. Go ahead. Have you gone to Climate Viewer News and looked at uh, Jim's map of nuclear waste radiation sites throughout the world? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Just just wanting to check because he's got a wealth of information there. 
I appreciate Enough that, Enough to scare you. Another thing that – I might as well make this announcement since we haven't really dropped anything, you know, surprise, surprises today. I'll, I'll make this announcement. Um, we're actually – well, I'm working on um, – Dennis, go look this up when you get off the phone. The Inventory for Conflict in the Environment. And it's done by Dr. James Lee at American EDU, and I believe it's on the American EDU website. But I'm going to be going through and mapping all of that out. And there are some real shockers in there, like um, the the Russian government dumping multiple, multiple nuclear reactors off the coast of Japan, between Japan and China, um, Russia, you know, dumping them up near Norway, uh, America dumping them. You know, for, for 40 years, we didn't know what to do with all this waste. We threw it in the ocean. And I intend on mapping out all of those spots as best I can. Um, it's going to be a long process, brother, but bear with me. We'll, we'll get it all. We'll, we'll find out where the problems are. Map it out on Climate Viewer 3D. That's at climateviewer.com slash 3 capital D. Climateviewer.com slash 3 capital D. Um, and that's a Google Earth application and where we track uh, pollution worldwide. Um, so I'm going to be putting it there, and we're going to make a WordPress site that's dedicated specifically to that um, topic of all this nuclear pollution. Um, so look forward to that one, man. <laughs> This would be ideal for San Onofre Nuclear Power Plant and also Indian Point near New York City because it's contained, it's ready to go, it's ready to be neutralized. Just build a pilot plant and you can do it right there and generate electricity by the same generators even. So it's ideal and it's not being used. Well... We'll definitely look into it, um, and, and it sounds promising, man. I hope that it's as good as you say it is, and we'll do everything we can to raise awareness about it. Sure. All right. All, all we have to do is do a test, then everyone will see. But it cost, back then, in 79, it was $2 million to rent a, a linear accelerator in Egypt for a test and hire people to do it, you know, the referee, the test, and all that. And you would see it, but you know nobody could uh, would uh, raise the money because of what Reagan did. He made, he made it illegal, so why would they spend the money? Well, I think that it has a lot to do with this whole hydrogen storage, glass ball, microspheres um, stuff. They're also turning all that radioactive waste into tiny glass balls that they intend to fill with medicine, hydrogen, and possibly sulfur for SRM geoengineering. Um, but, yeah, they're taking that radioactive waste and turning it into glass balls now. So um, there's a market for uh, their waste. There always is, you know, and you're not in it. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, okay. thank you for your call. And any other listeners out there, please give us a call at uh, area code 347-324-3704. Please call with questions, comments, or your thoughts and opinions. We'd like to hear from you. Thank you. Yeah, we got guys. We got about four minutes left um, in the show, and uh, I think we should probably just you know uh, wrap this up right here. And, oh wow, uh, just, it went fast, man. Yeah, I know it went really fast. I was so nervous at the beginning. I, I I could barely even speak. It's been so long since I've done this. And you guys, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I love you all, and thank you for being you know part of the Climate Viewer team and for caring about what you do. And for being here for me today. <laughs> I don't know how I could have done it without you. Thanks for um, having me here, man. Yeah, but now yeah, that I get, get the, the, the sillies out, you know, I think we're going to have a whole lot of fun with the show, you know. Um, we're going to really get into some topics, we'll like really flesh out some of these complicated topics on Climate Viewer. Um, you, you never know who you're going to get. Um, I probably will be here every single day. Um, there may be a day where Radchick takes the whole show over, or Packy takes the whole show over, or Bill takes the whole show over. Um, but know that it's coming from the Climate Viewer team, and we're going to have guests and have fun with this stuff. And as serious as this stuff is, and as scary as a lot of the topics that we talk about, we really want to focus on pragmatic solutions so that you're not left sitting there feeling scared and hopeless and that, oh, my God, it's just so bad. We're never going to be able to do anything about it because I fully believe in America. I believe in the people of Earth, not just Americans. I believe in people. 
And I believe that, you know, if we really care about a topic and we really focus on what the facts are, because we're never going to get them from the mainstream media, um, it's going to come from people like us. And one thing I want you guys to all notice about ClimateViewer.com, we all have real names. My name is James Franklin Lee, Jr. I'm 37 years old. I'm from Sumter, South Carolina. Climate Viewer News has a real address. It is 25 Trip Drive, T-R-I-P-P Drive, Sumter, South Carolina, 29153. Climate Viewer has a phone number. You can call me, 803-450-4305. If you are someone that cares deeply about making a difference in this world, if you're a part-time Facebook sharer of scary things but want to be a blogger, if you're a vlogger on YouTube or Daily Motion and you need a place that you can feel safe to do this type of work, Climate Viewer is your home. And, you know, I, I extend the same um, offer that I've given to Bill and Packy and Radchick to all of you. You know, if you care deeply about this world and there's something that you just have an aching urge to constantly complain about online and your website's getting hacked every day or your message is getting censored, um, Climate Viewer will be a place where you can speak freely. So um, anybody else want to say anything? we got about a minute. Yep, I'd like to thank uh, Jim Saunders and Dennis Nestor for calling in. I think they're very Definitely. important people, as part, important to the process that we're trying to convey here. Thank you for calling in, guys. I want to thank you, Jim. I want to thank you, Bill. I want to thank you, Christina. It's been a uh, pleasure to meet with you guys live on air, and I look forward to uh, many, many, many future shows. Yeah, man. Amen. Definitely. Yeah, it's great so. to be part of this with you guys. It really is. I feel it. I all. really can't wait to get into a lot of this other stuff. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we a got lot of ground I wish we had another of- four hours. <laughs> yeah, a lot of ground covered all the way today, and it went so fast, man. I'm surprised it's already over. Yeah, well, there's always next week. You know, uh, everybody, be sure to be here next Sunday at 6 p.m., 3 p.m. Eastern, or uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'm a viewer raider. We're going to do this every Sunday. I'm really looking forward to uh, having you guys back. I'm looking forward to our callers and all of the wonderful stuff we're going to uh, do. Come see us. Is this going to be podcasted later? Yes, sir. We're out. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. God bless.